I have chosen poems that have been already published. Um, that's not only in books. Uh, it seems that um, it also counts in the... Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> it also counts if it's been on, f on Facebook. So this poem is... Um, there's a courtyard from my mother's balcony and you can look down to the church and watch people having baptisms or weddings or having a party there. And you can also watch the Easter ceremony. So this is called Fate and Toothache and it's about watching the church. I hear the voices of stories lived long ago. Church bells sound a halting song from the belfry next to my house. The priest is teaching the boys the ropes. In the end, he can't help himself and gives an impromptu recital just for the heck of it. This is how it's done. This is the sound of pure joy. I spent time watching the goings on in the courtyard of the church, the lives of others. I see blues, blue and white balloons. They are baptizing a baby boy. The parents walk slowly in the best clothes, the father holding the prize, the mother adjusting and readjusting till it's all perfect. A falling shoulder strap, the baby's hair, the father's thoughts. Two people with huge cameras are recording the ritual proceedings. Inside, they will undress the baby. They will immerse him fully in warm water. They will anoint him with oil, cut off a tuft of baby hair, dress him in wonderful white clothes to symbolize renewal, taking photographs all the while. Some people think the terror and the crying is cute and funny. Maybe it is inevitable, like fate and toothache. All of us have gone through it. It's a shared blueprint we Greeks carry to every corner of the earth. So, um, this is a love song, but it's to no one in particular, <laughs> okay? And it's called Falling Backwards. I am falling through the world's backwards, an act of trust in gravity, play, soft grass. Falling through sounds and colors, falling through hot, falling through cold, lost in the smell of your hair. And if it seems ungrateful to hold on to something so slight, like hair, smell, when I have been shown the universe, well, that's me. Small, slight, a hair's breadth from the miraculous, a whisper away from true love, the smell of your hair mixed in my breath. So this is in the We Humans book. It's called Distant Symbols. You say, my wife inhales water through her nose. I don't know if she's turning into a mermaid or an angel, but I know the transformation has begun. She hoards thousands of butterflies in her pockets. Bronze sand dunes fill her chest of treasures. And even though I know nothing of Jungian symbols, I notice the distant symbols. I can hear the shadows growing. I see growing tears in the four corners of the sky. Clouds dart into the room when I open the doors of her cupboards. Pure water gurgles inside the walls. I can hear it when I get close. It sounds loud, like a waterfall, but I can't see a thing. I really don't like her colorful birds. They leave droppings everywhere and she doesn't clean the house anymore. She just sits in a bathtub filled with rose petals or cross-legged on the kitchen table, an otherworldly smile on her face. Wherever it is that she is, I'm locked outside. I find feathers between my teeth, rose petals in my hair, and rays of sunlight on my fingertips. When I touch her, she shines like gold, but she never notices my presence. She says, my angel, please look at me. For I am the bringer of gifts and dreams, your key to a priceless paradise. So, 
And this one is for Gerina. And I was once sitting on a bench in Hampstead Heath and this bird that was a, a little bit fat tried to fly off about twice, banging into trees and things, and in the end it made it. So it's called Unreported Miracles. Not all birds find it easy to fly. As they struggle inelegantly to stay afloat, the wind is not playing fair, not for them. Next straining, they flap and flap and somehow they keep going. Spare a thought for those of us who find life difficult, the ungainly ones, the ones who keep striving on, the birds with bodies too big for their wings. On a perfect, clear, silver day, we'll walk gingerly out our door, holding tight onto our umbrellas, we'll take flight and reach heaven. That's why the weather has been a little unsettling recently, a little unsettled. Small, and reported miracles are shifting the pattern into new shapes, to the left of light, to the right of darkness. Um, so I don't know how we're doing for time. Um, okay. Um, this one is a song about living in hot countries. So for me, whether I'm living in Greece or in Australia, it's very similar. So. I have written it, you know, with olive trees. When I read it in Australia, I put gum trees, you know, when I read it. So here it is called White Hot. The heat inside your bones tells you you are home, just like in your dreams. Dreams of home, dreams of rest. The rest you crave away from dust and constant movement, away from wind, sand, thorns, rust, now you can rest your soul. The thirsty vista sweeps away and out further and further, it smiles from the closest spring, closest spring. You were there in another dream. It's a place where thirst becomes unbearable and the rustle of angeled wings is a hiss so faint you have to stop breathing to hear it. Home is where the bitter spring gurgles its song inside your veins, where the wind is you, where sunshine clings to your skin after the sunset is long gone, and the stars have ancient names you understand. Salt scratches the window panes. Its swirly song eclipses the night crickets, and all you have to do is sit there, watching the sea of fireflies pop and bop among the olive trees, and the swoosh of galaxies kissing may have happened in your dream, but I don't think so. So, and this is everydayness, and that is about somebody. I love this everydayness, the ordinariness of doing chores with you, remembering I forgot to water the flower pots again. A touch of acute awareness punctuates the making of beds, the laying of clean sheets. I'm testing the smell of clean on the pillowcases, polishing the taps, wondering why I need all this silver, towels, dishes. Always bumping into you in the rooms of our crowded house, in corridors lined with too much stuff, piles of books staking a claim to places and times before there was you, or suddenly looking up, seeing parts of you in a new light, and realizing with surprise that I am happy. Happy as a bug on a leaf in the sunshine, high up in a tree in the forest. So... Uh, and this is uh, Dreaming of Freedom. And yeah, it's about relationships really. I'm writing a letter to my sister who doesn't know she has freedom of choice. She's never found the little angel wings growing on her back. Never even wondered 
what's in that parcel she's been keeping unopened for years. Day after day, she wakes up alone in her bed. There's a man in the bed, but no matter. She doesn't have the time to ask who he is. She makes up the bed, she cooks him breakfast, she irons his clothes. Silence is his companion. He doesn't ask for an introduction, he's lost on his side of the bed. He may even be happy, I don't know. He doesn't talk much. He likes the sea, he likes fishing, he sings to the wind. People lead such strange lives and they never ever think of me in mine. And this is called uh, The Mechanics of Memory and Loss. And it's about being in the world. <laughs> There's a knack to wasting time. There's a mechanism that turns logic inside out and stretches excuses to breaking point. This so-called elastic time breathes meaning into aimlessly going backwards and forwards, endlessly going up and down the Escher stairs. It blesses the opening and closing of drawers again and again and again and again. Stretch, searching for what was glimpsed a moment ago, looking for what has vanished into thin air. The black pawns have left the chessboard and the white queen is so lonely without her shadow. Do poltergeists attach themselves to messy people? How else can I explain the glasses knocked out of my hand by an invisible force, my symbols of yin and yang shoved between the cracks? I have a secret box full of single earrings, jars of honey get stolen when I turn my back. My clothes are beautifully folded in neat piles. They are color coded and ironed. I'm not neat and I never iron my clothes. I don't remember if I ate. I don't know if this hunger is want or actual hunger. I'm not sure my rights and obligations, and, and I am sure my rights and obligations were read out to me. I found a copy with the red red seal on it. The wax smells new. But it wasn't yesterday and it wasn't today. I was sleeping in another bed in another country. Yeah. And this is the chocolate and oranges that I did before, and it's short. My love says I smell of chocolate and oranges, and here's me thinking I smell of bergamot and cucumber, wood sage and sea salt. Be it as it may, when the rawness of the world lays us bare, it's the smaller words that save us. The scratches, details, kindness in small doses, chocolate and oranges. So, and yeah, and I have a, a last one, which was one of the first ones ages ago, and it's called Food Rapture or Bite. Increase the volume. I want strong tastes, pure, saturated colors. I want turmeric, saffron, green olive oil, fat, pink peppercorns, baby capers, foods that burst when you bite them, foods enhanced by sunshine and the proximity to the sea. Seeds that hiss and crackle, that pop and sizzle and are not necessarily good for you. Foods that spill out of the contours that define them. Foods that burn when you bite them. Foods that bite you back. So, I don't know, I mean, I'm... The, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's more, hello. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. <laughs> but, but I think it's, we're okay now, yes? Are we? Thank you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Daphne, Daphne, we started immediately with the reading. So can you introduce yeah. yourself 
for the audience oh. again. Or yeah. maybe Emmanuel, can you introduce Daphne? <laughs> yeah, I'll go back. Or say something about Daphne. <clears throat> Isn't that a little late for that? No. It is in there. Daniel. It better be do it. <laughs> well, Daphne Alex Kulu has long been one of a poet whom I admire. I read her um, on Super Creatives about, I guess, about once a month. And I suddenly remembered yesterday the time we met in Lewis. In a pizza place, yeah. yeah. We met in a cafe. I thought she was a charming woman. And um, the other person who was there was Sherry Forty. Do you remember that? that was Sharif there? Oh, okay. Seems a long time ago. I mean, Adrienne and, um, and Rihanna were there as well. I remember yes, that. I think for a while, when you were in England, you were chair of Super UK. Is that correct? Uh, no, it, it's it's before that. It's before oh, okay. that because if right. I because I re what I remember is still living uh, in Brighton because I th I think that what mostly what it is about um, how I write and how I am. I mean, you know, I was born in Greece. I was there till yes. I was about twenty five when I went to England to study, and it was weaving and uh, I was always interested in um, you know the um, creative arts that have to do with images not so much but I think you can see it in the poetry that I see things a lot because I'm, I'm used to observing like a painter does but yes. um, but I would have a difficulty talking you know and even when I was little um, at school, I stopped talking, you know, and the more you said to me, say something, the more I just stop. So I think when I met you, I didn't even write poetry yet. Um, I think it started a few years after that. It just suddenly manifested and that's more what I do. I can't, uh, you know, I can't let go of the art bit. So I like sometimes to have photographs together or, um, collages that I make together with a poem. And some people say it actually makes it better for them um, to have that. Um, but it's just uh, with anything to do with painting or the weaving, of course, you need a huge loom. I, I would let other things get in the way of doing it. While with the poetry, I'm still writing. I'll, do it it's anywhere it's, oh yeah yeah i'm still writing but i thought you know it's better to do the things here that i've done and people have seen rather than um you know than things that i'm working on now but i am still working on poetry it doesn't come as fast and furious as it did when it started you know so it was catching up maybe so sometimes i'd have you know, two English poems and one Greek one in a day. And I wasn't sleeping very much. And I was quite like that, but it stopped, you know, it, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. But fun. I loved it. Yeah. One thing I like about your poetry is that it is multidimensional. It, it's, it, it's, it is to do with the physical, the material, the familiar world, but also it keeps bringing in or referring to a mm. world which is kind of imminent rather yeah. than material, rather than physical. And there's, I just want to read the last verse of one of your poems, which says that, that's why the weather has been a time unsettling recently, a little unsettling recently, a little unsettled, small unreported miracles are shifting mm -hmm. the pattern into new shapes, to the left of the light, to the right of darkness. There's so much mm -hmm. of you in that, in that verse. I love that. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was wonderful Thank you. reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's lovely to see you all, all over. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I love it.
and thanks uh, for for doing this. Hello, <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah. Could I ask a question, Daphne? Can you come into your mind. Uh, yeah, we... yeah. It's a, there's a first line that just uh, pops in quite often. Not always. There's there's a recent one I can share. Um, Adrienne. Um, asked me if I would write a poem for her Holocaust Memorial Day, you know, and I had absolutely nothing, and I don't like um, writing to order, you know, it's because I'm used to it. But in that case, I, I just woke up the next day after saying, I'm not sure, and even that came in, you know, and it, so, yeah. What has started happening more recently is that, before they'd chase me, you know, so I'd have to stop the car, literally stop at the side of the road, write wherever I'm still finding things on receipts and, you know, as I've shoved it. And I thought, oh, this is rather nice because <laughs> oh, I've totally forgotten. And, uh, and there's more, you know, and that's, there's more fun coming that way. <laughs> but, uh, but now I can retain that first line and wait later oh. and once I write that first line I can go and write it down or at the beginning mm. I had to only do it with a pen and pencil now I can do it on the laptop it's interesting the, the more I immerse myself the more things open up so so actually I might have the whole poem um, the first time just comes through complete and then I have to read it loud to myself um, and I'm aware that with some of these, you know, I could have worked a bit more <laughs> on, you know, rehearsing them and not tripping so much. But um, they're also in some ways a little unknown to me, you know. So every time I read it, it's like, ah, yeah, and there's this line. Oh, and that was a good line. I, and I don't even remember I did it. So there's some of that. But I read it out loud because it has to, because there's no rhyme, uh, you know, whatever the word is, you just have to have the rhythm to work in a certain way. Because if I don't achieve that, uh, that poem will be hidden for a while until I get to a point where it works, the musicality works. Uh, but that's most of the work I do with it. Um, and even right now, I, I chopped a bit of something as I was printing it. And I thought, no, that's always bothered me. And I suddenly saw it. Whoops, okay, I can do that. Um, so, yeah, so there's quite a bit of that. And I'm also aware that there's some levels, you know, so there's the level of the everydayness, but you always have an awareness of what's happening all the time and it's actually funny because um, my mom said that before you became a poet we weren't always sure what on earth you're talking about <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, so now you're a poet you know you just say these things and we say oh okay um, and once you do this switch you can get what's happening because for me that's how I've lived it's actually very, very difficult to be organized. And, you know, <laughs> um, and, you know, when I was saying, I don't iron my clothes, I don't iron my clothes, I don't do these things, housework, <laughs> dear Lord. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's, um, yeah. Well, thank you. How about uh, a stupid question? Do you, does this stuff come to you in your laddie hand at all? I have a few little ones in the Latihan, yes. Um, I must, sometimes might have um, a poem where I don't have the ending, and that might come in the Latihan. But um, no, it's not only in the Latihan. Um, and, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll, if I've been working on something and then I go to Latihan, it might continue as a process. But Otherwise, I just have to, um, for me, it's a matter of a, of a very light touch. And the light touch is you, you know, you show, you don't tell, you don't preach. You just say, mm -hmm. this is me and the miracle, and you can have it too, 
you know, and mm -hmm. that's what I think is also characterizes what I do. Yeah. Well, thank you. I just have one other question. Do you ever perform yeah. your poetry? Like uh, an audience, a live audience? Um, only as much as in this way, like I'm, you know, so I've, I've done a few which are not um, at congresses. So I have done a few like that, um, but not many. Um, I, it's actually good that this um, opportunity has come so that I can, you know, see that I'm okay because I was nervous till the last minute, but the moment I'm there, and that's another difference between uh, when I do my, um, with my art or anything like that, I, I'm not so ready to say, see what I've done, you know, with the poetry, I'm completely unashamed. You either like it or you don't like it. I'll, I'll recite it and I'm fine about it. I've got horrific stage fright in generally, but I don't when I do the poems. So, um, yeah, so I'd like, I'd like to do more, <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting to it. Yeah. Well, thank you very more. much.